welcome uh, Professor Claudia Felser to this week's material seminar. It's our first material seminar of 2023, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic one. Um, a lot of times people say so and so do not need any uh, introductions, but I'm actually enjoying this introduction, although I know that uh, Claudia is probably known to many of you. Um, and uh, but I'm, I'm, it fills me with a lot of joy just to kind of name all of the accomplishments um, that I see in front of me here. So uh, Claudia actually right now is um, a, a director in the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Physics of Solids in Dresden. And we actually met for the first time many, many years ago uh, in Mainz when she was um, a, a professor in Mainz. So she was a full professor in Mainz at the University of Mainz in Germany um, before she moved uh, to Dresden. Um, she has received the Order of Merit in German, that is the Landesverdienst Orden from the state of Rheinland-Pfalz for the foundation of the first NAT lab for school students at the University of Mainz. Also, she is a fellow of many different uh, societies, for example, the IEEE Magnetic Society, APS, IOP, CIFA Canada, and the MRS India. Um, quite um, well, quite greatly, she um, became a member of the Leopoldina, that's the German National Academy of Sciences in 2018, um, and the Akatech, the German National Academy of Science and Engineering. Um, she was awarded the APS James C. McGrody Prize and also was elected to the United States National Academy of Engineering and also the National Academy of Sciences, which is very impressive. In 2022, so last year, it was also another great year. She was awarded the Max Born Prize and um, the Medal of the DPG and IOP, the Liebig Medal of the Gesellschaft Deutscher, Deutscher Chemiker, and the Wilhelm Ostwald Medal of the Saxon Academy of Science. And this is, um, as I said, very impressive. I love, personally, I love female role models. Claudia, you are certainly one of them. I'm still the the uh, the type of person that sits in an airplane and is happy when we, when I have a female pilot. This is this is how excited I am of of <laughs> of of seeing female role models. And uh, you're certainly, as I said, one of them. And I'm very happy that you agreed to give a talk. Um, today about chirality and topology and uh, Claudia, can you share your screen? Thank you very much because uh, of the invitation and please say for me it's seven o'clock in the evening, uh, Friday evening, so I can be very relaxed. You have still have half a day or a day ahead of you and I'm happy to talk a little bit about topology and I hope I inspire the young people to think about topology and chirality in general. Uh, in materials in general. So you might have heard about the concept of topology. So now I cannot move something, but it doesn't matter. So for example, this pancake has the same topology as a cube. So simply because it simply has no hole, you know? Therefore they call the genius zero. And in a similar thing, a coffee pot and a donut have the same topology because they have a hole. And this means the genius is one because one home. So now you can continue the bread, so which we like in Germany. So, and this is thing, this wooden thing below the bread. So this is where they put beer glasses in. So they both have three holes and it's very obvious that the genius is three. So if, Chris, exactly. So here you see the transformation. Ah, now it's in the other mode. Oh, sorry. I think now that was my, my fault. Okay. We, we will manage. You see that you can convert a, a, a pancake into a, 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 you can transform the surface of a pancake into the surface of a cube. So the next slide shows you, the next slide, Christina, can you click? Sorry. Okay. Yep. So, so many people didn't recognize, even I didn't recognize until a few years ago, that the quantum Hall effect, which was discovered by quantum, uh, by Klaus von Klitzing, is the real origin of topology. Because even Klaus von Klitzing thought for a long time it's an exotic effect. It only appears if you have this very special two-dimensional electron gas, which means it's a very complicated layer of gallium arsenide and blah, blah, blah. So to have exactly a certain property of this two-dimensional electron gas between two layers of uh, 
semiconductor and you have to exactly adjust the charge care concentration. So then you go to high magnetic field and go to very low temperature, which means uh, a millikelvin. And then you see suddenly that uh, if you simply measure the resistance, what you do every day, I assume many of you in material science, then you see suddenly that it's not a line or a curve, it has this plateau. And the plateaus are very, very exact. And the reason for this is that all the electrons in the material are localized like in sodium chloride, but only the electrons at the edges, they are not localized and they are topologically protected and they have two spin direction. And in this uh, edge states, which are two edge states in the uh, quantum Hall effect, the electrons, the momentum, the direction of the electrons and the spin is uh, locked. And in the moment when the spin and the momentum is locked off an electron, an electron is chiral because similar like the right-handed and left hand, we can have two kinds of electrons and they're distinguished uh, under the conditions of chirality. So next slide. So uh, surprisingly for me, it's like that you can see even this effect in, in crystals. I always say, Christina, you are solid state chemist and there might be some other solid state chemists. So we make crystals. And if you would have measured the crystals at lower temperature, but this is this effect appears here, for example, in hafnium telluride, a very common, simple uh, uh, chicogenite crystals. So you see exactly the same effect. Even by doing a very simple PPMS measurement on a single crystal. So unfortunately, before 1984, nobody did this and nobody recognized this. Otherwise, maybe some chemists would have gotten the Nobel Prize and they would have recognized these very nice plateaus, which you see in a simple single crystal of hafnium telluride, as you see here. And there was another Nobel Prize for the fractional quantum Hall effect. And even in the single crystal, if you go down to lower temperature, so the plateaus you see already at 12 Kelvin or something, and this fractional values you see even at uh, 50 millikelvin. So for me, it's really amazing. You know, we missed several Nobel prizes, Christina, because you didn't measure simply the right material. But you see it even appears in the, this material. And why does it appear in the three-dimensional crystal? You can think about this two-dimensional material simply as stacking of uh, two-dimensional decks. Uh, uh, this electron gas, which they made artificially here in the work of Klaus von Klitzing, by taking normal semiconductors and adjust them. So this simple single crystals have it naturally since the, you have a really truly two dimensional structure. So I think it's amazing. And this shows uh, how strongly even uh, this um, first invention is related to simple materials, which we have nowadays very often in the lab and everybody knows how named telluride is not so difficult to me. So the next slides shows us then the history. So 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 as I told you, the this quantum hall effect with this very nice plateaus were measured in a large magnetic field. And uh, uh, Heldane knows, and chemists should also know if you are, also physicists should know, if you go to a magnetic material, the intrinsic magnetic field because of the magnetism intrinsically in the material is very large, much larger even than the field. Then the fields uh, which Klaus van Klitzing has needed to measure the Hall effect. And uh, Hall Dane already had the idea in the 80s, or maybe, maybe I can think about other materials where we can see the quantization like Klaus van Klitzing saw, and he simply thought about magnetic materials, really already there, and said, then you find even a quantum anomalous Hall effect. Honestly, I was surprised that nobody really understood the paper and did the measurement before the boost of topological materials in 2005, because it's very obvious there was this time of uh, uh, magnetic uh, semiconductors, spintronics, and I was really surprised that nobody tried to prove the Haldane idea right. You know, this paper was just after the discovery of the quantum Hall effect. And then people obviously think what goes with the magnetic field and people now thinking spin orbit coupling is maybe also leading to some magnetism. So it's obvious that Kane and Mailer thought that spin orbit coupling might be a way to find quantum Hall effect in materials. And they came up with the concept of quantum spin Hall effect. And finally this, 
has boosted the field. For me, a little bit surprising that we missed all this time of uh, we didn't do something earlier on this. Field. Okay, so in the next slide, what we are doing there. Okay, so the basic concept of topology is like the band inversion. Uh, now there are more uh, things uh, related to, uh, but this is a basic concept. So we know we have S, P, D, F bands. Okay, we have all kinds of bands of symmetry. So, um, and in a semiconductor, in a classical semiconductor, we uh, naturally have a valence band, which are the occupied states. This is here the blue band. And the conduction band, which are the unoccupied states, this is the red band. And we have a band gap. And the band gap depends very strongly how strong the atoms are interacting in the semiconductor. So if I have the atoms very close to each other, so the band gap is larger than the, if the atoms are far from each other. If my material is more ionic, so if the atoms are having different electronegativity, they, they also have larger band gap. So what can happen if the atoms are loosely bound that even the valence band and the conduction band overlap and you formally would have not a band gap, you don't have a band gap, but then you have this crossing point. And if you click the button, Christina, for me, then you see that this crossing points uh, can be also forbidden crossing. And this is what you see in the third uh, diagram so that you can then have a forbidden crossing. And if you have forbidden crossing, a band gap open again. And now my valence band has a little bit of conduction band in the middle and my conduction band has a little bit of valence band in the middle. And then what happens then, and if Christina clicks the button, you see then that naturally you connect the valence and the conduction band with each other and you get this pin polarized surface states. And this means that my electronic structure has now different topology from the electronic structure of a normal uh, semiconductor. So if you click now twice the button, so Christina, then you see that a normal semiconductor is simply insulating because it's a band gap, all the electrons are localized. And similar like the quantum Hall effect, our topological semiconductors has now not edge states. He has this uh, electrons around the surface of the crystals and where the spin and the momentum is locked and they are also spin polarized. So you have two kinds of electrons at the surface and they are topologically protected. So if I would take a hammer and try to destroy these electrons or the crystal, it's not possible. So it's, they are topologically protected. If I destroy the surface and make the surface trivial, like the trivial semiconductor, then simply these edge states move more into the, or the surface states much more into the crystal, but they're always at the borderline between the topological insulator and the, uh, uh, and the uh, 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 trivial insulator. So if Christina clicks the next, so, so the interesting thing is that, as I mentioned already, which is really also makes a nice bridge then between physics and chemistry, is that this electrons, if the spin and the momentum locks are locked, are chiral electrons. And I think we should think much more about them uh, maybe in the future. Okay, so the next slide shows us simply how it works. You know, if we have molecules, so we have carbon atoms, which are here the black atoms, and they have four different ligands because carbon can have four different ligands. We can have exactly the molecules with the same composition, but for different, uh, uh, different arrangement of the ligands. And then they behave like the hand, uh, the right and the left hand, and they're chiral. And these molecules are super interesting because they are why we are existing. So we are only made by one kind of molecules and we eating the sugar only of the one kind of molecules and nobody understand why, why this is the case. So this is one of the big questions. So if you want to get a clear Nobel Prize, you should solve this question. But uh, the same situation we have if we have electrons with spin and momentum is locked. So they are also chiral. So maybe there's a way to understand maybe something between topology and chemistry and material science and condensed metaphysics. Okay, so next slide. And this is why I'm interested in this uh, topology and you have to click in again. So if this electrons, and this was why people were super excited about topology when they recognized if the electrons were the spin and the momentum lock are moving in one direction, so they cannot be backscattered in the other spin direction and in the other momentum direction, which makes them so stable. And so you have that what a person in spintronic would dream of, 
a fully spin polarized current. And uh, the, what you see also in some of the topological materials that they have ultra high mobility, giant mean free passes, even mean free passes, which are larger than the crystal size, if the crystal size is millimeters, okay? So this is amazing. And people partially see also spin polarization in non-spin polarized materials, but this is also still, I think, an active field of research. Next slide, please. So, so you can click more than once, I think. So here we can say there are many nice papers. And if you click twice again, you see that nowadays we think more or less every material is topological. There was a recent, even magnetic materials now were identified which are topological or not. And I'm sure that Christina Maxine's phase, there are many interesting topological materials. You simply have to look them up. And because especially if you allow for doping and changing the Fermi energy, and this is the last paper, if you click again, uh, whether we simply allow for, so because it's simply that you have always overlapping bands between S, P, and D and different symmetries, and this always lead to topological properties. And, and what the people also are, what is really interesting, and I simply want to talk about chirality today, but especially also in magnetic material, you see suddenly giant effect, thermoelectric effects. So for thermoelectrics, this might be taking topology into account and maybe also external forces is uh, the way to go, I would say. Okay, so next slide tells us that uh, so what we can have, we can have this kind of overlapping conduction band, valence band I told you. And if you draw it in three-dimensional uh, picture, like you see this here on the left-hand side, then it's uh, uh, overlapping area, which is more like a line. This is a, cold, a so-called nodal line. If you read papers about nodal line and what you can have, you can have a full gap in the topological insulator and I explain you all the surface state already. But what can happen also depending from the symmetry of the crystal. So if you have, uh, for example, rotation symmetries, we can have that some of the area of uh, our crossing points stay, stay connected. So we have this degenerated point and this lead to semi-metals. And we can have semi-metals which are at high symmetry points which have a lot of symmetries. This is a direct semi-metal, it's like cadmium arsenic. But if the symmetry is reduced, we don't have inversion symmetry, or if we have magnetism, this crossing points, this linear dispersion, which we see here on the right side, then uh, white semi-metal. And they are super interesting because suddenly we even have electrons which are chiral in the bulk. So not like the surface state in the topological, so uh, you have even this crossing points like Dirac crossing, you see this and the green and the yellow dot. So these are uh, electrons in the bike, which are uh, 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 chiral. So they act like as a monopole and magnet and magnet. So you have a source and a sink, and this leads to very, very, very uh, interesting properties. Not only that you have now this very special surface state, which you see here as arcs between the yellow and the green points, as arcs on the surface of the crystal, but you have in the crystals this uh, point. And on the next slide, we probably see. So in physics, uh, people very often talk not about the real electron particles or the, uh, they very often talk about quasi particles. So the electrons might be slightly changed. And if I have a linear dispersion, the electrons suddenly have no mass. Therefore they call about, they talk about massless electrons, but they're still electrons, don't worry. Okay, sometimes people make a connection to high energy physics or astrophysics, don't worry. We, your materials still have electrons, but they are quasi particles. This is like what the slide wants to say. Okay, so next slide tells us in the nice story, why am I so excited about the chiral uh, electrons? So, and this you learn even in uh, Wikipedia. So one explanation probably is the, uh, most convincing explanation of the origin of the universe that we have, we are existing in an universe which exists of particles. 
and there are only a few antiparticles partially also artificially made. So normally you would assume if you start with nothing and the vacuum state, you would uh, get the same amount of particles as you get antiparticles, okay? And they should recombine and nothing would exist. But uh, there is a possibility that we have an asymmetry between particle and, and antiparticle is the chiral anomaly. So it's an explanation and it's called, it's an anomalous non-conservation of a chiral current. So in the field, if we would have so uh, a Dirac uh, situation, like we have, if we have this Dirac cone here, which we see on the left side uh, in the vacuum state, so we, uh, would have uh, the same amount of particles and antiparticles, but there could be a situation where you can find uh, broken uh, symmetry between particles and antiparticles, and this explains the matter and the antimatter. And this is related to a relativistic version. So the Dirac equation and the Weyl equation would deliver the uh, uh, explanation. So if you are a theoretical physicist, you could read the papers from Adler Bell. Etc. But the nice thing of topological materials and since Dirac semi-metals, you can simulate this asymmetry between particles and antiparticles in the ways that you look for quasi-particles, electrons and holes in the band structure of a semi-metal. And look whether you can find the broken symmetry between electrons and holes. And people in high energy physics. Uh, even Nobel Prize winners like uh, Frank Wilczek are super excited about this because they can prove whether their concept for uh, the origin of the universe are correct and even whether they can explain dark matter and some gravitational uh, uh, properties because it's simply possible now thanks to topology because the concept is just the same whether we deal with vacuum state and the origin of the universe or whether we have a direct semi matter. So this is why I'm super excited about this, okay? So I told you already chiral life, chirality plays a role in life, and now chirality plays also a role in the origin of the universe. And you make a simple material, and I'm sure it's a maxin phase where you can find the chiral anomaly, and I'm sure there's a maxin phase where you can find the gravitational. So the next slide shows you the example. Um, now this shows, puts it in a bigger, bigger content. As, as I already said, you have this, this big, parity violation, so the origin of life, why the DNA is only one-handedness which exists in life, and the same is like the weak force, the uh, wood decay, I could now show the anima animation, but this is also a very nice uh, uh, parity violation in the weak force, and you see it if you see the better decay of cobalt atoms, depending on the winding of the uh, of the um, what you call it, Spooler. Anyway, so you see whether the electron decays more in the one or the other direction. So the next slide now hopefully shows this in, in relation exactly. So now we have our white semi metal and this E dot B term. I, I think we can ignore it, but this is exactly what we want to do. You see here in the middle, at the side, you, at the right side, you see the white semi metals and the, uh, the nice. A case where you have the asymmetry between the uh, violet uh, electrons and the bluish electrons. In the middle, you see the experiment. You have simply to do an experiment with the magnetic field and the electric current. So you simply measure the conductivity uh, of this material, and you can prove this chiral anomaly. This was the concept predicted by people like Bokov et al. So that they say you should see a negative magneto resistance effect. And they gave also some prediction, uh, so be a such step from Harbour, what happens uh, if you apply a an additional temperature gradient. So this involves entropy and you should see the axial gravitational anomaly. So this is like what you find in some papers and every condensed matter physicist became very excited to find the right material and to do this measurement. And we did this for a material like niobium phosphides you see on the next slide. So this is a uh, white uh, semi-metal. This was, uh, there was this prediction where, this is a nice thing of topology. So suddenly theory prediction work, okay? Some people predicted something, but they were very complex material, difficult to make, but with the niobium phosphide and niobium arsenic, so the material could make, be made by 
chemical vapor transport. We could make very nice single crystal and it has uh, no inversion symmetry, exactly what you need. And the white points are very close. And on the right side, you see on the upper part, my scheme, which I always showed you, but on the lower part, you see really photo emission. It's like a photograph of the electronic structure and you see nicely how similar it looks like if you do a, a photograph, uh, a photo ingress or photo emission, you really see the linear dispersion and you see that the, the bands are crossing at the top. And on the next slide, we probably see um, the surface state. So this was this Fermi axis I told you. And on the, we simply focus now on the, also on the uh, right side. So you see the red lines, the red pictures are uh, calculation, which Bin Haiyan did. And the uh, yellow and the green dots are again the white points. And the blue lines, the pictures are exactly the experimental. Results and it shows very nice the Fermi axis, half moon kind of uh, surface state. And in the middle, you see the nice linear dispersion. And you see, even if you go from niobium to tantalum arsenic, so the spin orbit coupling, the relativistic effect becomes larger, and therefore the splitting of spans. And also, the distance between the white points depends strongly on the spin orbit coupling. So, Christina, you should look for heavy maxine phase. Okay. So, the next slide shows then what is also typical if you make the, a good quality of the crystal, you see a giant response always, which means also honestly, so the properties as a function of a magnetic field, an electric field, of light, of temperature is always extreme. Here you see if you apply magnetic field, you can significantly change the resistance from a metallic kind of resistance to a semiconductor, but all of the semi metals have also plateau at the end. And if you see the zero Tesla line here at the bottom of the, the resistivity curve, you see you see this wiggles and this are quantum oscillation. This is also very typical for this topological material. They 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 show very nice quantum oscillation, and you can get the position of the. Fermi energy and the white points very nicely out of the quantum oscillation. So for niobium phosphate, it was a little bit tricky because white points were not directly at the Fermi energy. So it was good that we made nanowires, what we see on the next slide. Uh, you see here on the right side, so simply a sketch. And what we did there, we measured simply the electric field, as I said, and the magnetic field in the same direction. Uh, the first direction is like in a Hall measurement, they are perpendicular to each other, and you see here the conductivity. And then you switch the next slide, uh, the direction of the magnetic field into the direction of the electric current, and you see a giant change in the conductivity, and this was exactly what was predicted. So, and you see at the same time that you, in a sketch, have more yellow uh, electrons now than green electrons. And then you can do the same in a thermoelectric uh, experiment, what is the next slide? Again, here's the same number of green and yellow atoms. So uh, here also you measure with the magnetic field perpendicular, then you switch the magnetic field direction and you see also a giant effect if Christina clicks. Uh, so here on the right side on the bottom, so if the, everything is in parallel to the B fields and you see this, and this was a gravitational phenomenon. You can say, so what? Why is everybody excited? This are all theoretical prediction, which were originally done for high energy physics, or astrophysics, and now realized as quasi uh, or tabletop experiments in a solid. So the next slide shows that this made it even into the New York Times. You see that uh, the physicists were quite excited about this. I have to say they were co-workers from IBM and they have a good public relation department. They <laughs> were really useful in this regard. Okay, so the next slide told us uh, also it's not only in niobium phosphide. So your Hermann's group in Ohio State, they did it also. They designed the bismuth exactly to have the white points close to the Fermi energy. And they saw also both effects. This was last year published in Nature Materials. 
And I think maybe on the next slide, I have another example of we already, yeah. Anyway, what they see also, it doesn't violate the Wiedemann-Franz law, Christina, important for you. So which means there's no artificial effect, but you see it also in magnetic system, which is the next slide. So we found uh, a very nice uh, cargo lattice and everybody's excited of, about the cargo lattice. If you want to write a nature paper, Make a cacomy lettuce and send it to nature. I think they are totally <laughs> crazy about cacomy lettuce. <laughs> so even if it only has one property, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so here you see on the left side the band structure, and you see again nicely this crossing. It's very easy cross, you know, like you. Uh, and uh, here you have again only the valence band and the conduction band crossing in this magnetic material. And uh, if you um, and you see the white points, the rod, red and uh, blue dots here. And we showed also here's a chiral anomaly because the referee wants to see this. So we said, okay, we do it. <laughs> anyway, so, but in magnetic system, I would say one should be more careful because the negative magnet resistance is not a rare case in magnetic system. Anyway, so, so, but this was the starting point. And then people, the next slide shows, so. And can even think, you can see if you see band structures and everybody of you already have seen band structures and you see there are a lot of sp spaghettis and how many spaghettis are crossing, okay? In magnetic systems, every crossing is a wild point. I don't know why people don't write more nice, interesting papers, okay? With giant Nernst effect and so on because every crossing in magnetic system is a wild point, but you can have, despite of Dirac, crossing on high symmetry points, fourfold degeneration and Y points, you can have more strange crossings in some materials like uh, six-fold degeneration and so on. If you see your band structure, you find also sometimes six uh, bands coming in or three bands coming in and blah, 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 all kinds of crossing. Everything shows uh, something interesting. If the Fermi energy, the energy which separates the uh, valence band and the conduction band is just there. Okay, so this is an important thing because otherwise you don't see it in transport. But then we started to become, I started to become interested in this chiral fermions. In this chiral fermions uh, is another prediction from theory. This was the serial paper here with Andre Bernovic, but the precondition to find the chiral fermions is really to have chiral materials. But also everybody in material science and chemistry knows 30% of the space groups are chiral. So the number of chiral materials are also not so rare, okay? And the nice thing in chiral materials, what you see here on the right hand is like, so you can have this chiral electrons at different energies, okay? If the chiral electrons are at the same energy, it's much easier to annihilate them because they can meet. If the chiral electrons are at different energies, they cannot meet, okay? So they are very stable and they're even leading to Fermi arcs, which are giant. This was a theoretical prediction. And you think, okay, theory can predict a lot. Is this really reality? So since there are so many chiral compounds, we decided to look for a very famous class of materials, a B20 structure, because people look for skirmions in this class of materials and the chiral structure, skirmions in magnetic materials. So we looked for the chiral fermions. So this is the next slide. Yeah, no, I think maybe a second click. So the interesting thing here was when the theory paper was published, I think Carlo Benaka wrote a commentary about this and I really liked it. He said, look, the Dirac solution and the wild solution is a solution which the people know in high energy physics and astrophysics. But the chiral fermions is the solution which is not known in high energy physics and astrophysics. And this has reminded Carlo Benacker of a, a, a citation of Heisenberg. Heisenberg already thought, so if some of the astrophysicists say to you, a material science is boring, give them this citation, okay? So if you could put a lattice on the universe, you will have much more interesting quantum chemistry and quantum physics and quantum effect than you have only in the universe and uh, in high energy physics. So he said in this, case, you might even can get situations where electrons could morph into protons, photons, and uh, that were not massless. But okay, he thought it's an absolutely crazy idea. But thinking about quasi particle, I still think that there's a lot of undiscovered, uh, interesting physics also in materials based on topology, 
they are so crazy we don't think about, but we should simply find the right materials, okay? So it's still a nice tool to do very nice, uh, interesting physics, okay? So click. <laughs> okay, so we simply thought, okay, Space group uh, B20 structure is good. So it's a chiral space group. And as I already told you, that uh, there are uh, uh, 43 archiral space groups which can host chiral crystal structures and 11 really in anthropomorphic pairs of space groups. So I already uh, discussed this. My people should publish the paper simply about the chiral topological material because I think. For me, it's the most exciting field because I think we might can bridge the solid state chirality with the uh, chiral chemistry. Uh, last year, my friend Ben List got the Nobel Prize for chiral catalysis. It's still a big field and there's still a lot to do. I think this is really something where we should do more. Okay, next slide. So simply to give you a brief idea. so. How to make chiral crystals? This is a challenge and it's also an unresolved uh, problem. And uh, we had a retreat today thinking about, so sometimes we are lucky in some of our compounds, we really get homo chiral crystal, which means we have a crystal really of one chirality, okay? And why do we very often don't see the interesting physics? First of all, we don't look to the right uh, properties. So now suddenly in topology, we find a lot of interesting properties in materials because now we know where to look. Okay, but the other thing is very often we get a mi mixture in a crystal, which is of both handedness. Okay, so, and then it's like a twin crystal. So our uh, many domains in a magnetic crystal, we don't see anything, okay? In a magnet, we can use a magnetic field to make it monodomain, but how can we get monodomain chiral crystals? And this is still a challenge. So recently people found this uh, chiral charge density wave system. They can make one chirality by applying also here magnetic field or chiral light, which I think is super cool. Tantalum sulfide is always chiral, it seems to be. Okay, but here we still have to work and learn how to make more homochiral crystal because if you want to really see the interesting properties, homochirality is important. And we should, uh, I think there's no really systematic, nobody investigates systematically how to get homochiral crystals. While in organic chemistry, homochirality is everything of organic chemistry, no? Because the whole pharmaceutical industry relies on homo chiral molecules. And the new way to make homo chiral molecules like when listed, always leads to a lot of uh, 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 reputation, increased reputation in, <laughs> in science, but also like uh, it uh, also has a lot of industrial impact, okay? So far, there's not really a systematic asymmetric heterogeneous catalysis of chiral molecules. Okay, so still also motivation to work in this direction. So on the next slide, we see that it's also changing to get the structure of homochiral crystals because the crystals, first of all, they have exactly the same energy and they have exactly the same band structure and they look exactly the same. But um, very good crystal graphers, they can distinguish, but there's also this uh, electron backscattering diffraction, which helps us also, also to identify uh, 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 the areas uh, uh, of uh, the different chirality. So this is electron backscattering, and I think it's not so expensive to install it in a normal SCM. So, but this is the way, which I think personally is the best way to identify the chirality of some. Uh, and you see there are many chiral crystals in the B20 structure already. The manganese silicide is known uh, from, um, from uh, the skirmion community and so on, uh, iron germanium, but I think there are now a lot, but you know, this are only the B20 structure. We didn't look for other structures yet in the topological properties. So next slide is like, um, okay, why are they so interesting? I already told you, you see, you see on the right side, the Y points in the Y crystal are at the same energy because we still have a mirror plane. But if we have chiral, 
materials. So chiral materials don't have mirror planes, okay? They only have rotation. So they can be at different temperatures. So therefore they cannot annihilate. And if you see the picture here, they are even at different points in our reciprocal space, the Bryan zone. So, and therefore they lead to this giant Fermi axis, which you see here, this lines on the surface, the surface state, which is as the squares here on the top of my crystals. And they go over all the surface of my crystal. So, and the Bryan zone here, you see, and they are really chiral. So this was also surprising for me that the surface states are so chiral and they might play a lot of uh, a big role and important role maybe in catalysis. So I think the chirality and catalysis people also start to study. So the next slide shows then um, uh, our concrete material in the B20 structure. We have this exactly this two, uh, two uh, Y points. The one is the bluish and one is the dark bluish. And one is at the gamma point in the uh, reciprocal space in the momentum space in our spaghetti, and one is at the R point. And on the right side, you see this nice three-dimensional visualization. And the next slide shows, and um, uh, yeah, so so again here, so both crystals have exactly the same spaghetti. Okay, the only distinction between the two sp uh, crystals is the face, but the face we don't see. So there is something which is an advantage of uh, crystals versus molecules, is that the crystals because they have translation symmetry, they have this face. So I told you this is the source and the sink in one crystal, the source and the sink are uh, exchanged. And I thought, look, this might be an advantage if you want to make homochiral molecules, even happy with the help of solids. So different from the, also in molecules, they have exactly the same energy. They have exactly the same MO diagram. Therefore, it's so difficult to get only one kind of molecules or call the same one kind of crystals. Anyway, but here we have the phase, which is distinguished, even if the electronic structure looks the same. So first of all, can we see this? And now we go through for a few slides a little bit faster. So this is Engel Ressort photo emission. We really do again the photographs and the next slide probably shows this. Yeah, so here you see really the... On the right side, you see the six-fold uh, fermion, the... And on the, which is at the R point, so simply to, do, to compare the calculation again with the experimental design, uh, results. And on the uh, left side, we see the fourfold fermions. You see always the calculation versus uh, the blue pictures, always the experimental data. And the next slide shows, and the, um, ah, so the next slide shows that more or less. My chiral crystals now with two different chiralities is like a moment of my wild semi-metal, you know? Once, so in the wild semi-metal, I'm dynamic, I can switch the chirality, okay? Here, I can learn a lot by, since I have both handiness in two different crystals, which is also an advantage, you know? So, and the next slide uh, shows then the, Fermi uh, the surface states, and this was investigated by several groups also. This is here with Neil Schröter on pla palladium, platinum, gallium, I think. And it shows nicely that one Fermi axe goes in this direction while the other goes in the other direction. Okay, they are really chiral. It's a little bit difficult to see. You need a little bit fantasy or you have to believe me. So the next slide shows also this is a little bit for expert, maybe to do two clicks in the other thing, but it lead to a very nice uh, paper. So one thing was that the people said this topological number in this material is uh, different. So you have churn numbers from plus minus and uh, two minus in one chirality of the crystal and in the other it's also swapped. And this we could show simply by seeing that the surface state are split thanks to spin orbit coupling and uh, that they uh, are really surface state. And the next slide would also show that they have different uh, signs. So because uh, um, the uh, one goes down and one you see here on the lower picture on the uh, right side, okay? The slope of the uh, bands, the surface bands are different. Uh, and they are also behave like mirror pictures. 
Okay, so this was the uh, idea here. And the next slide hopefully shows that we also can have a look on the face if exactly. So one way, and this we know from uh, uh, the chiral molecules is to see, uh, to distinguish is chiral light. So we thought, okay, maybe it's good if we look on the Engel resort photo emission data with chiral light. And it's nicely here, you can really see that the face is different. If you see here on the right side, the two pictures, uh, enantiomer one and enantiomer two, they look also like mirror planes. So you can now distinguish the band structure. If you use circular dichroism and chiral light, so you use your bands get a phase. And the phase is related to angular, angular uh, orbital angular momentum to think more about the orbitals. And this is again going in direction uh, chemistry really again at the interface between chemistry and physics would be maybe something that could could shine more light on this interesting chiral uh, chiral solids. Okay, and the next slide tells us also um, there's another example you can do this with Hassan we did it on rhodium silicide and cobalt silicide and this material even shows some charge density with instability but I don't want to talk about this they show many other interesting properties which probably are related also with the very special topological properties. But then the interesting question is also, can we make a bridge to chemistry? And we did the first steps here and Christina has to click again. Oh no, there's something. There was a prediction also that you see in, in, in it's always the most convincing thing if you see a quantized effect okay so the big thing why mercury telluride got so much attention is also because they saw a quantum spin hall effect so when uh Joel Moore did the prediction that this circular this materials would show a quantized circular photogalvanic effect we were looking for this and we see a kind of rough plateau but it's not very nice in rhodium silicide I would say here we have to do also more work so this is still our dream to really show what the theoretical physicists predict that we really can see the quantization which is exactly then giving us a churn number the plus four churn number but this is a uh, not really done because we see here only a small plateau of a small energy range. And this is because we have many other bands, maybe vaccine phase or some other chiral compounds have not so many bands at the Fermi energy as our compound. And they are more delivering here something more clearer. Okay, so the next slide shows also with SDM you see nicely that you have a chirality here because also here we saw a distinction between the two enantiomers, but I don't want to go. And you see the Fermi acts nicely with the different slopes, but uh, anyway, so I'm not an SDM person. I don't want to go here in detail, but it, all the data are very consistent. Okay, so next slide. So, so maybe you do two, two clicks. So we liked also to look here for this materials as a catalyst, first of all, because some of them contain platinum and palladium. And uh, we had the feeling, so since the electronic structure with the crossing points uh, uh, is active, if you want the topology is active and the surface states are available over a big range of energy different from platinum as a metal, which is the best catalyst still, and other topological material. And even for oxygen evolution reaction and platinum, they are both topological materials, by the way. So we have still the idea that top, uh, catalysis is related to topology or one should think about this. So we did then really measure their catalytic activities. And uh, this is on the next slide. So you see, they are really the chiral click. So the chiral material show really very, very good performance as you see here in the Vulcano plot. And at the same time, uh, this also measurement in this paper, uh, there are a lot of measurement that shows also depending from the, uh, 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 the voltage over potential, you see really uh, that they are performing even better than uh, uh, commercial platinum cutters. So you can compare it, but anyway, it shows. But at the end of the day, and this is the next slide, we also wanted to show that we see an asymmetric absorption. And for this, we look for dopamine, right and left-handed dopamine, but this is only started. And unfortunately, the postdoc, uh, Gouvai, 
of my group leader there left us back to China. So we are just starting again because this is my dream for the future. You can imagine I want to have topology talking to chiral molecules and seeing how the origin of the universe in topology maybe is connected to the origin of life that we are made only. This is really a crazy idea and maybe totally stupid, but I think see already that we see a asymmetric absorption on these materials. And I hope I see more on topological materials in the future. And maybe the younger generation will do it because I'm now getting older and older and this is a long-term vision. And therefore we go to the next slide. And this shows also what uh, I, this is only to be mentioned. So just recently people found that in some very simple system like tantalum sulfide and so on, you can switch the crystal structure chirality or the charge density wave chirality. And this leads even to very interesting electronic properties like uh, chiral transport. And I'm coming now also slowly to the end, don't worry. So which means you can also find materials where you can switch a chirality. And this is really quite new. And this is also something which I think super exciting. This is this famous superconductor where we found the switchable chiral transport. So it has a chiral charge density wave. But again, why don't the people why didn't the people see very often chiral charge density wave? Simply if you have both domains, so you think it's a higher symmetry. So we really have to be more careful also if you look into the structure of the materials. Okay. So this is, I think Christina would fully understand. And the last slide I hope comes now. Uh, this is another vision. So, so to do more, this is a vision. So it would be super interesting to look more for, can we, can we transform information or like chiral electrons, chiral phonons, chiral surface states and so on, and can influence uh, chiral molecules with this. This is my dream, but this is like a project for 100 years, you know, so please uh, take part in this event. <laughs> and the last uh, slide that is really hopefully the summary. Exactly. So I hope I, I convinced you that it's very exciting that topological materials can to host chiral electrons. And since my background is chemistry like Christina's, I'm super interested Stood in chirality. I love chiral uh, surface states and all this edge state. So can we do something maybe at the borderline even to molecules? I like that the white semi-metal shows extreme response under external stimuli. And I still think that there's a lot to do. Maybe thermoelectrics under external stimuli. I'm also uh, super excited about that we can serve as model systems to explain things in high energy physics and the new fermions, the chiral fermions, I think are also very interesting and but there's a lot of changing also to crystal growth and uh, it can make a nice bridge to catalysis and there are even people believing in the chirality induced spin selectivity, thinking that the oxygen evolution reaction would gain a lot if you have chiral catalysts. So I think there's a lot to do. And I thank you for your attention. And on the next slide, I hope I thank my group. <laughs> no, on the next slide. <laughs> this is uh, Anyway, because this work was for sure not done alone, I have fantastic co-workers. And I have to thank Christina and I think her fingers. <laughs> and I hope it was not too bad for you guys. Uh, sorry that my computer didn't work as well as the, it should work. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Claudia. Fantastic talk. And um, I didn't dare open the chat yet because I didn't want to mess up anything with the slides. Um, and if anybody has any questions, please, uh, indicate so in the chat or just unmute yourself um i think i will i will get the discussion started if that's okay um until people um bear, get, get together their thoughts um uh, maybe i missed it uh, claudia for the synthesis of i think you, you showed us a few cases um palladium gallium for example um making those chiral um crystals what was the decisive factor in the synthesis that basically determines if you're doing the right or the left um, hand version. You didn't it. miss it. 
It's a very good question. It was simply <laughs> like, okay, if we make 10 crystals, we get three uh -huh. with one chirality and seven with, seven with the other chirality. Okay. And basically, they are always homochiral, okay? okay? And they are done by flux, okay? okay. So yeah. now we have also Kochalski. So Kochalski, you can use the seed crystal and then you can yeah. do them better. Yeah. But it can still happen that it changes the chirality. So I definitely think we, huh. we, 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 we tried not to use tellurium. Yeah, we don't want to do tellurium. We are not interested yeah. in the properties of tellurium, but simply to try uh, mm -hmm. to make uh, to try different ideas which are known yeah. in organic chemistry to make chiral crystal. But so far, I think there's no systematic investigation. I think if somebody is young could start, yeah, yeah. That's so, very so in organic yeah. chemistry, they put some sometimes some chiral other chiral molecules, small molecules. Yeah. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. it's not something really good which survives temperature, which we need in uh, condensed matter. Of course, of course. If you make okay. oxides and maybe other systems and don't have to, maybe with your microwave you can use mm. them. Okay. But yeah. with the methods we use, it's tricky. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. So it, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. It would be a interesting area of mm. research. Yeah, yeah. And since I'm, um, I'm mostly, I mean, I'm mostly motivated by uh, synthesis science, um, as, I, as I like to say, I'm, uh, mostly focused on, on synthesis here. Um, you didn't mention, I, I don't think you did mention um, high pressure work um, in, in, in that area, since we are, we're getting this big NSF funded force um center here at asu with like high pressure uh, presses is that something that um could be, might be, might um, be. influential if you squeeze the crystals would would you expect something to change there? i'm not allowed to whether uh, i don't know whether i'm allowed to say but we have one co-worker who said they observe that under pressure it switched from one chirality to the other so okay. pressure might even if it's not logic but maybe because of the how the atoms are arranged and uh, so it might help but nobody has yeah. investigated okay. i totally agree if somebody wants to do uh, fundamental research on how to make chiral inorganic crystals in a similar mm -hmm. way like organic chemists spent a lot of time mm -hmm. making homo chiral molecules I think I think this is really something I would do if I would be twin. So we do a little bit now to try yeah. to get more of a chiral crystal. Yeah. But I think this is something which is I, I'm surprised that nobody did more systematic investigation on this. Right, right. Okay, thank you. I don't want to take up um, more of the time. Um, any other questions from the audience? I have just a very basic question. Uh, you know, having these topologically protected states and all that stuff can lead to new devices, right? But where are we finding them right now? I mean, like, is the semiconductor industry adopting them or uh, where are we seeing them most? I, I would say, honestly, so some of the material shows giant mean free passes. Yeah. And they, they, this is the research which people do uh, on hydrodynamic flow, which would be interesting for interconnects. Okay. And also the um, some of the uh, of the chiral crystal, there's a lot of discussion whether you can have spin polarized currents with long mean free pass. So niobium yeah. germanium, for example, and tantalum silicide disilicide show long mean free pass at the same time it's a spin polarized current. And also this is also unpublished results. Some people saw in our crystals also a spin polarization higher than in my fer half metallic ferromagnets, honestly. <laughs> so I think there is some potential, um, but I think, so if you would ask some experts like Stuart, they always would say from the materials discovery to the device in 20 years. Mm. Okay. So, but I think there's a lot of potential. Yes. Thank you. Okay, are there other questions from the audience? Just one very quick question, and this is out of ignorance, yeah. Claudia. Go ahead, Krishna. Uh, uh, could they could they show like the materials that you are working with? Could they show multifunctional topologically protected states like photonic and electronic at the same time? Are very they good question. It's not a simple question. It's a very complicated question. I think this is like the new paper of Andrew Bernowitz's team is on 
phononics, uh, phononic, uh, the topological phononic. And it's interesting that this chiral crystal there is under certain uh, uh, this, uh, chiral phonons. And if you think mm -hmm. about chemical reactions, the phonons play an important role in all the things. So if I really want to do homochiral uh, catalysis of uh, molecules, I have to think about the phonons in my, uh, my and how the phonon. In, Exactly. I would say you could also apply all the highly correlated physics to topology nobody did so far. If you simply like the diagrams, so like how the spins, the orbits, mm -hmm. the phonons, the magnons, and whatever, you know, when you have magnetic materials, you can think of yeah. that. And you would see the same. And I have people in my group even thinking now about topological polar returns and uh, topological yeah. whatever <laughs> plasmons and yeah. how they talk and then again in catalysis plasmons play an important role so i think i think this we still see only the tip of the iceberg i would say oh. cool. thanks claudia and meanwhile we will email you about uh, any candidates you may have i'll send you the yeah. the job posting if you know of anyone please let us know I'm happy also to answer questions via emails if somebody's too shy. Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. And as you say, you always ask this a simple question. And, and people simply very often think they sort of should ask every simple question. Okay. So, like, how do you make the crystal and so on? I think these are very often the most challenging questions. Sure. So simple mm -hmm. questions are the best question. And your question was fantastic because this would open immediately in your field and you can write very nice papers. If you, and then this is what I also ask always, how does the, uh, how does the uh, topological electrons influence all these other quasi particles yes. like uh, phonons and so on. Mm -hmm. And then if you use external particles like photons, what can you play? Yeah. So light matter interaction is something which is totally unexplored also. Yeah. I see a hand. Um, Mukesh Kumar, if you want to unmute yourself. Thank you for a nice presentation. And my question maybe is quite silly, but I'm a bit confused about that. How you determine the degree of chirality that I mean, I'm growing some crystals. So if I want to find out that how much chirality is there, so is it a technique or no, I think the crystal is very good. There is no degree of chirality. You could say, is there a possible, nobody thought about the degree of chirality. So for first of all, we have 230 crystal uh, space groups and some 30% of them are chiral. So if you find a crystal, you might find that he is crystallizing in the chiral structure, okay? But the dangerous thing is if you have domains of both chirality and since they have the same energy, always the crystals which have uh, this chirality or that chirality, very often you might not even see if they are chiral because they might have different domains. So some of the tantalum sulfide and selenide and all these crystals, some people found chiral charge densities oh. and chiral structures there. But they, they, there's much more activity just this year and last year on this field because now people look for this. And there's no really what, if you would have talk about ferroelectricity, you can say we have polarization and we have figure of merit. This doesn't exist for chirality. So chirality in the solid is really uh, unexplored. So it's not a simple or stupid question. It's even a good question, okay? So because sometimes like like twin crystals sometimes which gives you a higher space group, maybe it's uh, very often one has to look really much more careful in the crystal structure of material. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Father Antrilli. Good question. Okay, I don't see any more hands. Nobody's speaking up. So whoever is interested, um, email Claudia if you have some follow-up questions. And Claudia, thank you so much again. Um, enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your Friday night and your weekend. And um, everybody else, back to work. <laughs> okay, thank you very well, much. I'll, I'll Hopefully see lunch. you one day in Arizona, okay? Yes, Bye. we would love to have you. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.